Now this lovely landscape picture is of Horsmanden in Kent, in England. And it is actually a painting that I've done for somebody. So it's not part of the member's site, but you may remember that I have actually done the sky. And the sky was done on a, a previous clip. So I wanted to show you how to do a really moody looking sky. Anyway, uh, I've continued with the picture. Or that this, the reason I haven't done it on the member site, this is really, really difficult and it would be too hard. We could pick pics of it. I mean, that, that section there with the oast houses would be rather nice. And I may well make another picture of that uh, another time, but I make it bigger than that. So that you won't have the very fine detail I've got on here. And the trees here, are well, that, they would be a nightmare, folks, for anybody to have a go at those. But so what I've decided to do, though, um, and the person's given me their commission, <laughs> permission, not commission, it was a commission, but it gave me their permission to actually show you some cows. Now I've already done the cows in the field here, but here I'm going to do this cow and a little bit of the background. And one of the reasons for this is that I've been asked many times to if I would do the a meadow or grass. So this is going to be the whole of this grass is going to be done. But you know, just down over in the corner here, we've got a gate. And the cows haven't noticed it yet, otherwise they'd be through there. So I'm actually going to put that gate in for you. And that's the first thing we're going to do. And then it's a question of what do you do first? Do you do the cows? Do you do the cows? Or the meadow behind? Well, you wouldn't know if looking at this, would you? Well, what I'll do is I'll do this cow first and then bring the background up to meet it. That's what I've done here. doesn't look it, I know. It looks as though maybe I've done it all together, but I haven't. I did all, each cow individually first and then I put... Bring, bring, brought the meadow uh, up to greet them sort of thing and I'll explain that as we go on but let's get started and get this gate in before they escape. Now I'd already put in all the background and this is what you've got to do when you're doing something like this because you, once you put the gate in here and I'm using a very dark 175 pencil here you won't be able to touch it afterwards so it's got to be kind of finished even the shadow I put across there, I haven't made it too strong. Obviously just here where it would be, the sun's coming from this direction. So it would be at its darkest in this particular section. So I put a little bit of depth in there, but not all the way across. Okay, let's start the ball rolling by putting some gate posts in. And I've got a nice sharp pencil. Now I like the idea of having a little gap, you see, between that and that. And I'm going to do the same thing here, although I'm going to... Go over the top of that little bit of bush sticking out. See, see the see, gate. It looks more realistic if you do that. Now we go now the gate itself, and we'll have a five bar gate if I can get all five bars in. And to the bottom, and slightly larger than the person. I'm taking my time on this because it's very important. I love the idea of having. Now we'll have a couple of hinges, which will be where the gate is attached to it. And we'll have a, a suge suggestion somewhere there that it's actually held together. And we go across. Do, I always do this lightly, first of all, because in case I made a mess and I want to just change it. So I do it light first of all, that looks good. Now I don't want it on the ground, I want it to be off the ground. The shadow gives me a clue here. Now, as I say, it's a five bar gate, but whether I'll get five bars in is another matter. So it might have to be a four bar gate. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll have to put four bars in because if you think about it, it's going to be closing up too much. So we have one there and one there. Okay. There wasn't a gate there at all in the, in the picture. In fact, there wasn't any cows either. I put them in afterwards to uh, make the picture a little more interesting for you and for them. And looking at that, I might have got a five, five bars in, but it's my decision and I can't make... Well, I, I, could, make a, I could make it different now. I could actually put... Um, it out and do it again, but once your decision is made, it's best to stick to it. That looks good now. I join them up a bit more there, a bit stronger there. That's it. 
no, that, is, that was a good decision. Now we've got to go right. We can go right across, or we can do what I really like to do, and that is go into the middle, go to there, to there. Surprising how good this is going to look when it's done. Even though I'm using a very dark pencil, it's still being affected by the colours underneath. But anyway. But I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. It looks good. It looks good. And now the cows, cows can't escape now. So that, that's my... Now I just... What I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of... Um, I won't do it with that colour. I'll do it with a, maybe a, a little bit of... One, two, eight, three. Now the thing is, what I've done here... Let me just show you while I think of this. And I don't forget it. In case you want to have a go at it yourself. I've used 270 to start with here because I wanted to. The cows will get have gone through there or come through there. Is my suggestion. And I put to, the reason I put the 270 in is because it's a good reception for 182, which I'm now putting in on top of it. And when it gets to here, I think we'll end up with grass. It makes it more interesting, and then um, I can do the meadow here because we um, we finish the finished cows. So we put the grass in, and go up to there. Now that's uh, that's one seventy. Now I'm going to put. 168. Now what you've got to notice when you see me through the grass is the action that I, I'm scumming in, in, scumbling in at the moment. Uh, I also want to put some brown in, the ochre in, but here it's not quite so strong. So we have a recession coming from where the Cows are trodden it all down, coming in there. Look at that. Okay, now what do we do now? Well, this is in the past I didn't do this, but now I can do it. What we're going to do is using the grey colour shaper. I suggest the grey rather than the ivory. And we're just going to push that in. I'd already done it down the bottom here. rubbing as such I'm just pushing it in using the colour shaper a bit like a paintbrush if I, if I was painting this this is how I do this I've already got the colour on it just pushes the colour into the paper in other words the colour of the paper is virtually lost now in amongst that and then we're looking at here, we're looking at a little bit of distance, but up here it's, it's more close up. So I'm going to use the dark green. And because I like corners, and in this case I want that to be a little darker in the corner, we then use the dark green going across. This is 174. And this is the key, folks. You don't put every grade of grass in like that. It won't work. What you do is you scumble it in. Watch the action. And the further you go into the picture, the finer the scumble. Like until you get down to here, which is very close up, you're not putting any scumble at all. You're just putting intermittent colouring. And now we can put some little depth of colour in here because of the shadow that would be coming in. Like that. See the unevenness is brilliant, isn't it? Can you see that? But down here, one can sort of get away with a few little tufts because we are close up. But as you move back, you don't want to do the same thing. You've got to bear in mind that we're looking at recession. I'm going to do all this again for you. 
little later on with a bit of depth in there. So, and it's also got to be designed. Now that looks pretty good to me. We put a little bit of a little bit of ochre in as well into the and we can also put just a smidgen, but I don't want very much of the 175, just to put a little bit of extra depth in here and there. But that will that won't go I won't, don't want too much back there. But that is pretty good. Very happy with that. And the only thing I'm not happy with now is this is a little bit too pat, so what I'm gonna do. Now this is 177, so we can put a little bit of, because there'll be a little bit of mud, a little bit of you know, area where the cow would have churned some of the ground up, so we put a little bit of mud in there that. Okay, and we can also use 283 as well, so we can put a double, I like that. Not too much, you see, or you could always come back and do more. And I, probably in your mind you're thinking of what about cow pats? No, I don't want them folks. No, I don't think that would be a good idea. You can put them in your pictures if you want, but I certainly wouldn't put them in mine. Now, using the colour shaper again, just to touch in. And, and then, surprisingly enough, we use a little bit of white. I've got some here, you probably haven't noticed, but that. Just a little bit of white. You could use 270, but white would be better because the white isn't going to show up as white because it's going on top of the other colours. But there we get a there we get one well, nice effect. Now as I pull back, that would look quite stunning. Anyway, there we are. That's the that's the section of the gate and the cow in the field. And as I say, when I pull back, that's going to look great. So let's move across now to our other friend over here. Now they are black and white Frisian cows, this herd. So we start with the white. Now this goes on every part of the animal that is white, including the tail. And here. And then we got little bits of white. This is a lady cow, so she's got some others there. You know, careful, You've got to be careful. Although I've drawn this fairly carefully, you've also got to pay attention to the reference picture here because it shows the line. So you get you get a second crack at it. The first, if you, when you're drawing it, you make a one or two little food piles. You can correct it at this stage, because the line drawing itself isn't that strong. But we're not going to be able to cover the lines up. So the lines cover very well, especially when the grass goes in. But we could have made a small adjustment. So that looks good to me. There's quite a lot of fleshy bits under there, but we don't worry about them just yet. This is the, the reason I've chosen this cow to show you is it's close up and it'd be much easier for you to understand how it's all going to work. Whoops. Right through here and how we can get the colours. I think, to be honest, it, it's more stunning than the brown cows. Now I'm going to show you all of this because it is actually quite important that you see as much as I can show you. Now the markings obviously, I don't, here you might look at that and think well, that's a bit scruffy. Well I've drawn that, I've, I've redrawn that section from the original line drawing which I did and transferred. I've drawn it out again a little bit so it looks a little bit rough. But never mind, that's going to look okay when we finish with it. And a little bit of white around there. So mostly it's black on this back. Black on the back. And a little bit of white there that runs across there. I mean, you've got a lot of license with this because really, you know, every 
cow is going to have a slightly different marking. And you've also got to look at detail being as good as you can get it, but not over the top. And this is where we've got a problem here. I think what I might have to do, folks, because I used a pencil, I actually used a, a B pencil to draw this with. So it's going to have a little bit of graphite, if I'm not careful. I don't want that to mix. That's good. Let's go around there like that. Into there. And then you've got a little bit on front here. And this is where the pastel pencil has to redraw, do some redrawing, a redraw a drawing job. A little bit of tough on there. Which I didn't until I drew this cow, I didn't realise they had little tufts on the top of their head. Anyway. Now I think that's all the white as far as I can see. I can't think I'm gonna put any more on. And just at the bottom, just to make it easier for me, I'm just going to just put a little bit of the green. This is one one seven oh. It helps me to see where the how the cow is going to be nestling into that grass area. Okay, that's all I need to do at the moment. And next, the colour is notice my nice, nice sharp pencil, folks. And it's quite important here. Okay, this is grey. And you're using two colours here. Well, actually, I'm using a third, but I'll show you that later. But only two on the build up of the black because it is very black. Now, this is tricky. This is There's a little bit of black on that back of the leg and back of that leg as well. Make it more difficult for me. There's no more black in that section, so we move on. Now, I'm, you notice that I'm twiddling the pencil a bit here. This is where I, the reason is I'm not going to use a blender here. I'm going to rely on the pencil doing and covering the paper. So, although you think I'm being a bit slow, it's that I'm making really sure. In fact, I've just seen another area which I quite like the look of. A bit and it comes in here and almost almost closes up like that I like that yes we've got to put some shine on here as well as it's not just a black cow we have or, or a black it's got a lot of tones in it it goes back there you see, we're going to have a problem when we come to this, um, or could have a problem when we come to this, putting this bush in behind. This, and this part, that's pretty. And here it comes down and then it disappears like that. And having done that, you see, you can then just fill it in. Now this is the cow you're going to be drawing as an exercise, if you want to. I'll be offering it on the site as an exercise. But when you see the line drawing, it will probably be a bit different to this because what I do is I'll take my drawing that I've done this one and I make the line drawing from that, not from the original picture. I always do that. It does make it easier for you to copy me. Hi, are you enjoying it so far? I hope you are. I'm enjoying doing it. It's just great fun. See, cows, generally, I probably wouldn't elect to do because I mean, they're a very important part of our life from the milk point of view and the beef. But really, they're not the world's most lovable creatures. Having said that, I'm sure people do love them. Um, 
So I probably wouldn't do an individual portrait of a cow. But in a situation like this, I think this is an excellent opportunity to show you. Now we're coming to the tricky bit now. So I'm probably going to have to shut up. And the other thing I'm going to have to do, folks, is to sharpen this pencil up. You wouldn't think I, I need to, but I do, because it's some very fine work when we get to here. So once I get to this bit on the leg, and there's a little bit under there which is really handy, gives us a good separation there. And that curls around there. I'll just finish this off. Just there, there they go. I'll sharpen my pencil and I'll see if I can bring you a bit closer as well before I do the head.